So if you finish section one and two, then you know it's time to move on. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and we finished section one and section two with that cute flag. So we are going to move on to section three. I had an easier block planned for today, but I felt like something with a little bit more bite to it. <laughs> so we're gonna jump into the firefly jars. I think that will be fun for today. So it's on page 28 of our booklet. So not only, by the way, I should mention, not only do we have section one and section two, sorry, upside down, section one and section two complete, but we also have all these extra blocks that, so really we're ahead of the game, right? Pretty fun. We've got all these extras done. There's another pop bottle. There it is. All right. So anyway, we are going to move on to page 28 today and we are going to work on the firefly jar. So for the firefly jar, um, we are going to go over the products that we need, all of the little pieces. There's quite a few. I tried to keep them in order. All right, so the first one is our background fabric, our main fabric, and it is this blue with lines all over it. And we need two of these. I do recommend backing it with fusible stabilizer. This is a very big piece of fabric, so it will help to ward off uh, puckering. So on this, we're going to start with them at six and a half by 12 and a half. And there are two because we need two of these firefly jar blocks. We really only need one of them right now, but it's fun to do them together. And if you have a big hoop, you can add them in together and just have them all done in one shot up to you. Um, but two pieces at six and a half by 12 and a half for our main fabric. And then we have all the little pieces. So for the first pieces, we are gonna use these red uh, leather. So it's the leather, you don't wanna back these with anything, they have this nice soft backing on them. So leave those just as is, the, these are leather. And we're gonna start with these at two by one and a half, two by one and a half of the red leather. That's for the handle on the jar. And then we have, are sweet as candy clear vinyl so this stuff is really easy to lose like it can get in your packet and then you forget it's there because you can't really see it very well so hopefully you can see <laughs> i feel like i'm holding up an invisibility cloak <laughs> so um two pieces and we are going to start with these at four by five and a half four by five and a half of the clear vinyl sweet as candy clear vinyl and then we have the Mylar for the wings. These will be fun. I like working with Mylar. I did, um, probably two years ago now, I made a fairy uh, shirt for myself and for my granddaughter. And I put, and it was like a sketch design. If you've ever done a shirt or even just a design um, with like a sketch design with mylar underneath it. It's so cool what it does. You have to try that. I highly recommend it. So my fairy shirt with the, I put this underneath the wings and they're just these iridescent wings that look so cool. I wonder why it's getting dark, sorry. Anyway, so we are going to have, let's see, four pieces of iridescent mylar wings for the, for the wings, and they are four and a half by four and a half, four pieces. I'm surprised we need four pieces. So I'm sure that it's two per block. Yep, two per block. So, the, and the blocks are very large, so that's why. One for the top, one for the bottom section of the jar but four pieces so these are pretty easy to stick together and lose so keep a hold of these four pieces of the iridescent mylar at four and a half by four and a half and then you might find these in your packet there's four of these and I was really confused. I'm like, why are these in my packet? They must be wrong. I must have made a mistake. And then I read through the directions and it's to make the pocket on the back of this block. So we don't actually do that until we're done with this project or pretty close to done, um, like when we do the embellishments. So I'm gonna put them in my embellishment pack at the end of this project. But for now I had them here in case you see that you've got them and wonder what they're for. They are for the pocket. And I did back mine, by the way. That's totally optional, but this is just for the pocket and I don't even have the sizing on it right now because we'll do this later. So if you find these in your um, Firefly 
jar packet just hold on to them for later for the embellishments all right and then we are going to quilt these so whenever we quilt we use our batting i'm using project batting um, there's some talk in our in our group today about warm and natural i used to use warm and natural and it was fine until you use project batting and then you're like oh like i don't want to go back this is it's so easy to cut it's the perfect loft for our quilting i really enjoy it personal personal preference so for the batting, we want two pieces that are five by 11, five by 11 large pieces of batting. All right, and like I said, I'm using the Kimberbell Project Batting. And then we are gonna quilt this with Kimberbell's Insect 2 in a size four by 10, Insect 2. So that's the one, I guess it's fireflies. It might be dragonflies. I'm not sure that it, it looks kind of like dragonflies to me, but anyway, um, insect two, it's part of the bundle if you bought the red, white, and blue bundle. And we're going to use it in four by 10. So this one has special cut instructions just because it's such a large, large block that we'll use a couple of our pop rollers. Three, we're going to use three of our pop rollers. So I'll show you how to do that when we get to the end. And I'm also going to bring you over to the computer and show you how to do them in one hooping if you choose. These are big. So the main fabric is six and a half by 12 our final cut size is four and a half by ten oh sorry four and a half by ten and a half so actually these will fit in a 10 by 10 hoop so it's a 10 and a half by 10 and a half hoop so if you have that hoop size that would work to be able to get them together um, it obviously would fit in a 10 by 16 um, it would fit in a 9 by 14 hoop um, so let me tell you if you have a smaller hoop if your largest hoop is a 5 by 7 there are instructions on the CD um, specifically for those that have a five by seven hoop and um, so that you can do the jar, so the, the firefly jar. But for the quilting, you would want to double hoop just like I showed in the beginning and that you would use a four by six and a four by four to be able to get that full four by 10 quilting. All right, four by six and four by four if you're using a five by seven hoop. All right, so I'm gonna bring you over to the computer and show you how to merge into together if you choose you can also do this on your machine if you wanted to join them together on your machine I find it a lot easier on the computer personally but personal preference um, so I'm loving in brilliance essentials I think it works so well and makes makes it's so much easier we can get all of these in together in one hooping and be done and have all these projects the, the blocks already done as we get there we're like oh yeah this this section is super easy because we already did a bunch of these blocks so that makes it really easy and fun to be ahead of the game so let's go ahead and get started on section three and i'll bring you over to the computer and we will um see how to join them together Hey everyone, so I'm at my computer and I want to quickly go through this firefly jar and how to do two and one hooping if you choose. Um, sorry, I don't know if you can see this. I can see on the video that it looks like there's this weird, I think it's my light. Anyway, um, so ignore that and sorry, I don't know what to do about it. Um, other than probably to video during the day instead of at night. That would probably be helpful. Anyway, I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials. That is the embroidery software that I choose to use and I really am enjoying it so much. A bunch of us in the group have purchased it um, and really enjoying learning about it. So I'm just moving it over to the side a bit. Somebody asked me the other day how to change the color of your this the background screen, your workspace on in Brilliance. And it's so easy. This yellow button here, you go up to this preferences folder, click on that, and it's the second item down display settings. And see right there, it says background color and you can choose it whatever you like. Easy, right? Um, okay, so I am on my 10 by 10 hoop, which is perfect. It's actually a little bit more than 10 and a half by 10 and a half, so that should work. Let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, so we are going to bring in um, the Insect 2 quilting design. So we go to this Merge Stitch File button. And by the way, let me close this. If you're not already on the um, hoop size that you want, you would just go to this yellow button again, the Preferences folder. Click on that, choose the hoop that you want, and um, say OK. And then I always like to hit this compass button and click on H for hoop. It just makes it so you can see the entire hoop. 
All right, so I am going to go to this merge stitch file button and I am going to find my quilting design. I actually have them on my desktop in the red, white, and bloom folder in quilting right there. I think if I click that, let's see. Yep, there it is. So four by 10 insect two, isn't that cute? So would you say those are dragonflies or fireflies? What would you call those? I looked actually on the Kimberbell website and it didn't say what they are. So I was curious um, what you guys think. I guess they're probably fireflies, but I don't know. They're actually very similar to the fireflies in the jar. So we'll go with fireflies. All right, so that's the four by 10 um, and that fits really well. Like I said on the earlier video, if you have a smaller hoop, you can do a five by seven and do a four by six and a four by four double hoop. That would work just fine. So I'm gonna click on this design and you can see that it automatically clicks on all five of the parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use the mouse button, not the mouse button, sorry, the keyboard button. Um, the left keyboard button to move it over to the side and you can see from the black squares here that it keeps it in the center All right, so before I do a copy and paste to get a second one I'm gonna go ahead and change these colors as I've mentioned in other videos If you keep this default blue and default orange since there's two of them Those would join together and that would be a problem Then you wouldn't have that stop to be able to put down your batting and put down your main fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and just real quick run through all of them and change the colors because there's gonna be a bunch more in the firefly jar as well. So I clicked on the first one, so one, one, and then click on the color and then this box comes up and I'm using Fultec Glide as my um, preferred thread. And so the first color that comes up for me is dark aqua. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and click okay. And then we'll just run through the rest. Same thing. Click on, I'm on one, two, click on the color. First color that comes up is blaze. Say okay. And then the next one, default blue is one, three, click on the color. And we've already used dark aqua. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the next one down, which is marine and say okay. And then one, four, click on the color. And we already used blaze. So I'm going to use Oriole. All right, and then I'm gonna change this turquoise too, just in case there's a turquoise in our, um, my doggies laying down, in, in case there's a default turquoise in the Firefly jar, just in case, it can't hurt, only takes a second. So I clicked on one five, click on the color, and the first color that comes up is Sprout. All right, so that's all done. So I am going to go ahead and uh, make sure I have all of them. If I were to do a copy and paste right now, it's only going to copy and paste this one five because that's what's highlighted. So you have to make sure to click outside of the box anywhere and then click on the box and you can see that all five steps are highlighted now. So I can say control C on my keyboard, C like Kristen or copy, and then control V like victory to paste it and you can see that we had one design now we have two it's right on top of that first one so it doesn't look like it's there but you can see over here in the objects panel that there are two so I'm going to go ahead it's already highlighted you can see all five steps are highlighted and I'm going to just use the right button on my keyboard and move it all the way over to the right making sure not to go over the hoop at all so right there is good all right, and then I can click outside of that to make sure that I have all the parts. I'm going to move this over one more bit. All right, you're just making sure that you can see those black squares. If this black square was over here, you wouldn't see it as well, and then you know you're over your hoop. All right, <clears throat> so there we have both of the quilting designs, so that is perfect. So, so far we have 10 designs or 10 steps so i'm going to go ahead and go to merge stitch file and now we want to bring in that firefly jar all right so mine is on the um, desktop red white and bloom embroidery files pez is what i use for my machine and we're on the quilt so we're looking for the firefly jar it is a six by ten there's also a five by seven. Let me see if we can see that. It's probably a separate thing. Let's see if I click open here. Yep, there it is. So Firefly double hooping. If you're using a five by seven hoop, then you that's the one that you want. Everyone else, it's gonna be in the main folder and um, it's a six by 10. Did I already pass it? 
Firefly jar, six by 10. There it is, six by 10 Firefly jar. All right, so double click on that, it'll go to the center. And what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I am going to first, let's see, do I want to change the colors or do I wanna move it over? I'm gonna go ahead and change the colors, why not, right? All right, so you can see that we have, this is two, we're on number three now. It's You can see that by scrolling up and you can click this minus button here and it'll close those so that you can see more of the firefly jar. So if I click this plus sign, it'll open it up and it'll show me that there's 11 steps to this. And you can see that we have a lot of default 12 whites and there's a default one blue, sterling, caramel, desire, black, blue again, another desire. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change all the colors. That just is easiest, especially for a tutorial because then you can follow along easily. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the first item, which is this default 12 white. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of white options, but let's go ahead and just see what we have. So default 12 white, so I'm on three one right here. I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna change it to the first one that comes up, which is super white right there and say, okay. And then there's that default one blue. So we have to remember that we, I was gonna say, we have to remember that we already used um, marine and whatever that first one was, I should remember that. Um, but anyway, it came up as a different set of colors. So sea green is the first one that comes up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on sea green and say okay, but I'm also going to go up here and make sure, yeah, it was sprout. I didn't remember if we used sea green before, so we haven't. So I'm gonna leave this open just so I remember. We use dark aqua and blaze, marine, oriel, and sprout. So we just can't use those colors. All right, so we're at super white and sea green. Now we're at um, another default 12 white. So if I click on the color, if we do not change the color, then those two will join. So it would be this one, um, which is probably the placement for the mylar. Let me see, it's the antenna. The first one is the antenna. And that would merge with the third step, which is the, the trail detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change it, makes it easy. And I don't think there's any other whites, so we won't have a problem. So I'm on three, three, I'm gonna click on the color and we already used super white, so I'm gonna use white. It's the second one down for me. And again, you can use any color. It doesn't matter as long as it's different than a color that you've used before. All right, and then sterling, we don't have another sterling that I remember seeing, but I'm gonna go ahead and just click on it and change the color just to do all of them. So the first one that comes up for me is medium gray. I'm gonna say okay. And then we have a default seven caramel. So I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna choose Cleopatra. It's the first color that comes up. And then this desire, we did have more than one. So we wanna make sure to change that. So I'm gonna click on the color. I'm on three six and then click on the color. And the first, that color, first color that comes up for me is monarch. So I'm gonna say okay. All right, and then we have default 14 black, and I'm gonna click on the color and choose black, the first color that comes up. And then we have a default one blue, so we already did sea green, we have to remember, I think it'll come up to the sea green colors, yep, there's sea green. So the next one down for me is mint, I'm gonna say okay. All right, and then we've got another desire, we already used monarch, so we wanna use the one after monarch, and that is cranberry. Fun colors, I like these. All right, and then sand, I think we had a sand before, so we wanna make sure, oh, cool gray seven. So we haven't had sand before, so I'm gonna change it to the first color that comes up for me, which is cool gray seven. All right, and then sterling, that's a thread color that we have in our red, white, and bloom kit, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it to the first color that comes up, which is medium gray. I'm not going to. See, look at here, in three, four, we already used medium gray, so we have to be careful about that. And we wanna use the next color down, which for me is titanium. All right, and that's all of them. So that was really easy. There's a couple that you could get away with not changing the colors, but you just wanna make absolutely sure and be careful with that. Um, to make sure that you haven't used them before. That's the big thing. All right, so that one is all done. I'm gonna go ahead and close this by clicking this minus button. 
and I'm gonna close the number two as well. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I have all of this number three, the third design here. And I'm going to just move it over. I'm gonna do it haphazardly. Let's see, there we go. I'm gonna move it over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to do that um, align and distribute that Tana taught us recently. So if I close up three, I'm gonna click on one because one is our quilting design that's over here on the left. And then I'm gonna hit the control button on my keyboard and click on number three so that those both are selected. Two is not selected, but one and three are selected. And then I'm gonna go over to utility, align and distribute. And if I recall, I think I did just center. Well, I'm gonna do center, center and see what that does. I'm not, I don't recall. All right, and that worked fine. So that centered that, it did move it over a little bit. So I'm gonna move it back over, I'm gonna say apply and close. And then these two are still highlighted. So I'm gonna use my left arrow key just to move it back over. And the reason for moving it over is just so that I have room for my extra fabric because our final cut size is four and a half by 10 and a half, but our, we start with our fabric at six and a half by 12. So we will have some overlap of fabric. So the furthest that you can get them away from each other, the better. All right, so that is done. And now we just need another firefly jar and we already changed all the colors. So we made it super easy. So I'm gonna click on just number three. Remember we had one and three highlighted. So it's important that we just have number three highlighted or selected. And I'm gonna say control C to copy and then control V like victory to paste. And you can see that now we have a number four, a fourth um, design. And that one, there's nothing else highlighted. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it over and I'm just gonna do it over here. It doesn't matter because we're gonna align it anyway. All right, so I just moved it over away from the first one and I'm going to go ahead and close this folder here. It's not a folder. I gotta think of what that's called. I keep calling it a folder. Um, but I'm going to click on number two now. So number two is that quilting design that's on the right. And then I wanna hit control and number four, which is that uh, firefly jar um, for the second one that's on the right. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to utility, align and distribute. And I'm gonna do that center center again and say apply. I'm on the I'm on the align. I'm on yes, I'm on the align tab. Center center and say apply. All right, and you can see that it it centered them perfectly between those two, but it also moves it over. So I'm going to go ahead and say close and then I'm going to move it over by using my keyboard button. You can also use your mouse if you prefer, it doesn't matter. Um, you just want to get it as far over to the right as you can. All right, so those are done. That was really easy. Now we just need to do that color sort because right now we have 32 color steps. That's not too bad, but it's enough that it'd be easier if we have half of that. So let's go ahead and do a utility color sort. Actually, I have to choose the design. So the way that I like to do it, especially when it's tight in a hoop like this, I like to go over to this objects panel and click down from the bottom and drag up. That's the easiest way that I found to be able to get all four designs. So I'm doing that and then I'm gonna to go to utility color sort. And it says this page has been reduced by 16 color changes. Don't forget to notice that I do not have RHS pre-sort selected. I don't have force applique position or material selected. And my tolerance level is at zero on Embrilliance here. So you want to have those same settings to be able to get the same results. So I'm always going to click new view just to make sure that it did what I think it should do. And it creates another tab. So here's our first tab with all four of these designs. And then here is the second tab untitled two, and it's all together in one design. So I'm going to open that up and just look at it real quick. So there's our placement for our batting, our tack down of our batting, our placement for our main fabric, our tack down of our main fabric, and both quilting designs. So all of those are joined together perfectly. And then we have uh, both of the whites together, the sea green, the separate white, the medium gray, the Cleopatra, the monarch, the black. I wonder how long this stitch out is. It's quite a bit of things. Um, and then we have the mint, that's probably the placement for our red leather and our tack down of our red leather. 
and then that's probably going to be the um that clear vinyl I'm guessing but not sure yet anyway so cool gray seven those are both together and then the titanium are together so that worked out absolutely perfectly couldn't be better again this is using a 10 and a half by 10 and a half hoop you could do the exact same thing in a 9 by 14 hoop or a 10 by 16 hoop um, anything smaller than that you would have to do them separately um, but if you have a larger hoop you have this option you could also do this using your embroidery machine to me that's a lot more work but um, I definitely am a software gal so software is easier for me but you have to do what works for you. So we want to make sure and save it. I'm gonna do a file, save stitch file as, and I am already in my red, white, and blue. I'm in the quilt. Oh, that's perfect, that's what I want. All right, so I'm gonna name this Firefly Jar times two, and I got a new keyboard today and it's working. <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, the last video I did, I was typing and it was not, um, typing the letters that I was telling it to type and I had to keep editing the video because it wasn't doing what I was telling it to do. So now I have a new keyboard and it is working. Um, so on that, I just want to say thank you for all of you that make those donations on the Christian Creates uh, YouTube channel. That's really nice. It really helps with all the supplies that I need for these tutorials. So thank you very much for your support. All right, so Firefly Jar times two and save. That's what I named mine. And now it's all ready. So you would now transfer this to a USB drive or transfer it to your machine if you have a Wi-Fi enabled machine. And we're ready to get stitching.
So on my goal, I think my goal for red, white, and bloom was something about building strength. I'm pretty sure I kind of switched over to my goal for Oh So Delightful because we're starting that next week. But for my goal for red, white, and bloom, I finally got on a bike ride last night. I, I'll share some photos if I have them. Um, but I did a bike ride in Japan. <laughs> How cool was that? It was pretty fun. It was a uh, it was a really good workout. This little gal, she's this tiny skinny little cyclist, and oh my gosh, she is so strong. And she's like, "Let's go, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun to be able to get that workout. I've also been walking my dog twice a day for a couple of miles each time. Um, sometimes I've got him on a leash and, and, and he's like way back there. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know why sometimes he gets like he doesn't want to go in a certain area he thinks he's fully in charge of the destination it's kind of funny but anyway what are you doing on your goal and my shirt today is my breast cancer one it says brave and strong it's a hoop mama design and I love this one but the funny thing is is I totally forgot that it is St. Patrick's Day and I'm not wearing green I'm super Irish I mean you can tell I'm very light skinned. My son even has a red beard when he grows a beard. We're very, very Irish. I even had a dog as we were growing up as a, as a little girl. I had a dog named Sean Patrick Aloysius Ducey. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Patrick Aloysius Ducey. He was a big St. Bernard. Um, but anyway, so I'm very Irish and I'm not wearing green. What is the deal with that? Did you remember to wear green today? 